Hi there, welcome to my channel. Are you new to Forex? Is this your first time of finding out, reading, watching videos about Forex? Then this video is for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome, good to have you here. Don't forget to subscribe so you get all the videos as they drop and click the notification bell so you're always abreast with the brand new videos. So let's get to it. What is Forex? It's a question that you would ask yourself, a question that a lot of people ask themselves when they hear about Forex. Is it a get rich quick scheme? Is it something you do when you're down on your luck and you just need something to just like a quick fix, a quick box? Something you just do sharp sharp and just make money. Is that what Forex is all about? Or is there something more to this market? So Forex in the simplest term is simply buying and selling of money. So most times when you walk into a bank, you see something that looks like what you, you can see here on the screen, where you see currencies fluctuating in different prices. We sell, we buy, etc. So that's pretty much what happens like on a day-to-day -day basis. Money is being traded. Money is being exchanged. Value is being exchanged. So the same thing also happens in the market. As long as people continue to exchange one thing for the other, they keep trading the forex market. So that's why we say we trade money. And money, of, of course, being referred to as currency. So forex in itself is a short form for foreign exchange. So when you trade the forex market, you exchange one currency for the other with the hope to make a profit. So basically, when you're engaging in currency markets, what you're doing is switching one currency for the other with the expectation that price will increase in value compared to the one you sold, hence the word exchange. So this is a market where you do not hope to get rich quick. This is a market where you do not hope to find a quick fix. If that was your aim of wanting to read about Forex, then you might as well switch lanes and do something else. This is a market where you want to take your time, you want to learn, and you want to trade with all seriousness. So this is a money market, buying and selling of money, and you know that anything that has to do with money does not require a quick fix. It requires a select amount of time, a certain amount of patience, and a lot of knowledge improvement etc. So training the forex market will require you to give it your time, give it your effort, and of course give it your money. So what is being traded? In simple terms, like I said previously, money. So we buy into countries economy like we saw in the on the previous slide we saw that we're dealing with countries here different countries when we say foreign exchange so foreign money as long as the country is listed as long as the, the country has an economy we trade it so be it australia be it europe be it london be it south africa whatever country has its, has its economy we trade it so we, we we trade this money virtually. That's really why we call it currency. So whenever you want to trade, whenever you, you want to buy or sell in the market, you always want to make sure that you buy or sell in the countries that has good data, that the economy is good. Because if the economy is bad, you, you, there's no way you can be buying into a bad economy. You always want to look to trade or buy into a good economy. So say you're looking at the London economy, for example, that's the pound. And all of the statistics shows that it's good to go. Then you might you, you want to buy it into that country's economy, or you're looking at the dollar, for example, and everything shows that the United States is doing well economically. You buy into their economy, so that's how it works. And if you're buying, you're selling simultaneously. You're selling, you're buying simultaneously. We'll talk about that, you know, as we continue the class. So since what we trade is money. These monies are in the form of currencies, and the most popular of them is the, the dollar, the Japanese yen, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, the Swiss francs, Great Britain pound, Euro. There's still so many others being traded. Emerging economies like the the Mexican peso, the Singapore dollar, Turkish lira, so many, so many pairs are being traded. So you get to learn all about these pairs as you continue your journey. Like I said, this is a journey. 
this is a marathon it's not a race it's not a quick fix it's not something that you want to come in and you hope to become rich or to get rich overnight why because you've been seeing people post stuff on instagram you can see people you know parading their lifestyle and selling this market like it is an overnight success no it's not it requires you to put in time to learn it so that's where we come in because we're committed to helping you learn about this market and trading profitably so we're going to be looking at the different types of currencies the major currencies are those currencies that are tied to the US dollar example of it is the euro, euro USD the ends of the USD and any other any other currency that you want to pick to the dollar so let's go back to these previous currencies so, so, so say you pick the Canadian dollar for example and you pay to the United States dollar that makes it the major currency now pick the the Swiss franc for example that CHF pay to the dollar becomes a major currency pick the GBP pay to the dollar so whatever currency you pay to the dollar is a major currency then we have the crosses these are those that are paired without the dollar. We have the yen cross and we have the other crosses. The yen crosses are those that are, they are paired with the Japanese yen. We all know that when it comes to production, manufacturing and all, we always look to China and Japan as those major, those people leading the bandwagon as far as manufacturing is, is concerned. So the yen is very heavily traded. So all of those crosses, anyone that is crossed with the yen is called a yen cross, while the other ones are just called regular crosses. So say pick the euro, for example, and cross it with the Canadian dollar, you have euro card as a cross. Now pick the, the Great Britain pound and cross it with the Swiss franc, that's the GBP check, that's a cross. Or pick the euro and pay to the yen, that's a yen cross. So you have euro JPY, card JPY, ECC, okay? So eventually, as yes, we continue in the lesson, you're going to learn a lot about all of these currencies. Next, we have the exotics. These are major currencies, and they're usually paired with an emerging economy. Remember what we said about major currencies? Currencies that are backed with the dollar, that are paired with the dollar. So any major currency that is paired with an emerging economy is an exotic. So it could be dollar, Mexican pesos, that's MXN, that's Mexican pesos, SGD, the Singapore dollar, Norwegian kron, the South African rand, Turkish lira, Russian ruble, ETC. These are all exotic. So as long as a major currency like the dollar, for example, is paired with that country's economy or an emerging economy, it becomes an exotic. Now, here's one thing you need to know about exotic. They're not heavily traded. As such, they're expensive to trade in terms of spread. In subsequent lessons you will learn a lot about spread like I said earlier this is a market where you want to commit time to this is not where you want to hope to get rich quick overnight this is like university so where you, you take you spend a lot of time going through the process of learning in university just so you come out with a degree that will afford you the opportunity to earn as whatever it is you studied so say you're, you're, you're studying to become a doctor for example you spend all of those years in school learning to become a doctor, sometimes seven years, sometimes eight. And then when you come out, you, you hope to earn as a doctor. So this market also requires you to spend to, to put in time to learn. So that's where we come in. We offer intensive trainings on teaching you to learn. We are only interested in teaching those who are interested in learning. We are not interested in teaching those who are not interested in learning. That's why our classes are premium. We only train those that are ready to learn. So if you're ready to learn, then leave a comment in the comment section or send us an email at winningwithforex 2.0 at gmail.com. So all of those will be placed in on the description box. So now, now that you know what the currencies are, let's take a look at some Forex lingua. All right, so for a fresh vocabulary, so that after this video, you could you know have an idea or have a way to, to impress your friends, impress your girlfriends, impress your boyfriend with the forex lingua. Are you ready? So here's the first one: exchange. Remember what we said about trading forex, exchanging one currency for the other. So what does it mean to exchange? As the English word implies, switching. You take one and give the other. You take euro. 
and change change it with, with, with pound. You take pound and change it, change it with yen. So when you're switching one for the other, that's an exchange. So the rate at which you switch these things is called the exchange rate, which is pretty much seen as the ratio of one currency value against another. So if you're looking at the euro dollar, it has its exchange rate, and all of these exchange rates, what they do is they indicate how many euro can purchase one dollar or how many dollar you need to buy one euro so if you live in in, in in african countries say like nigeria for example you always want to know how many naira is needed to buy one dollar or how many dollars you need to buy one naira so that amount the ratio of those is what we know as the exchange rate so you want to take note of that amount because an understanding of that amount will help you know when to buy and when you should be selling okay so when you click the buy button the exchange rate tells you how much you have to pay in units when we begin to learn more about quotes and base in the next slide you know what we're talking about so how much you need to buy or you need to pay in units of the quote in order to buy the base currency when you sell you're doing the same thing in reverse let's take, take a look at some some market charts so that we understand what we're talking about so as trading is concerned. So this is a chart of the Euro USD. Now let, let, let's let's bring our attention here and pick this. Make the color thick. You see how that So this is Euro USD. Okay, and on this point right here, we have the exchange rate. Now, if you notice, these exchange rates are different. They've got different prices at different places. Now, take a look at where this one was. When the euro dollar was at this point, it was at this price. So, so there's always a price here. The price here is the exchange rate. That means how many euro will be needed to buy one dollar and how many dollar will be needed to buy one euro. Remember how I said whenever you're trading, you are switching currencies, you're exchanging currencies. So you're simultaneously buying and selling. So if you buy, you're selling one if you sell you're buying the other let me take that again if you buy euro usd for example you're not only buying euro you are selling the dollar so you buy the euro yes but simultaneously you're selling the dollar when you sell euro usd you buy the you you sell the euro simultaneously you're buying the dollar so whatever it is you're doing the forex market you're always doing one and the other simultaneously so we buy we sell simultaneously okay that's really why these currencies are usually in pairs so the price you have right here are the exchange rates and these are the price that will guide you as to inform your decisions whether you should buy now or you should hold on or you should sell now or you should hold on so when price was at this point it gave it gave you a very good opportunity for a buy and the trader seeing this understanding technical analysis and being, being able to do his analysis based off you know learning and training and all which is what we are going to teach you we'll be able to spot this buy opportunity and make all of this profit and when he's done buying he can also come in here and sell and make all of this profit so what we do we buy we make a profit we sell we make a profit so it's not it's not just about buying 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 only you could buy you make a profit you could sell you make a profit so here's another one this is the usd cad Remember how we said just keep pairing them. So this is a major period and also a major currency. So the USD card also has its exchange rate at this point. So on a on a typical forex chart, you always see their exchange rate quoted. It's always listed, it's always there for you to know at the point where you should buy. So take a look at this now. This is a recent chart. After this video, you could go back and watch and and observe this market you see that it play out exactly now see where price was at this point it was at this price and then what we're looking for basically is a buy because price is at that point where you should expect the market to begin to work to begin to trend up so it's low it's cheap it's affordable you can buy it it's pretty much like your your regular buying and selling of stuff you go to the market today and you want to buy something and it's ten thousand naira or you know five dollars depending on, on, on the country you're in and then you 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 take a step back and realize that it's just two weeks of black friday 
they decide to chill and wait for Black Friday because Black Friday there's going to be a massive sale and then everybody wants to buy. Why? Because the price is low. The price is extremely low. There's been a massive offer, massive discount, cut in price, and then you now look to buy at that right price. So that's the same thing. Pretty much the same application of bringing to the forex market. Always looking to buy when the price is low, and then when the price is high, you look to sell it. So remember what I said: whatever you're doing in the market, you are profiting. You're buying, you're profiting, you're selling, you're profiting. So when we say base and quote, I did mention it earlier. The base quote. This is another forex language. Base and quote. What does it mean? Currencies are always quoted in pairs. We, we just learned that you can't really see GBP stand alone. It has to be paired for for anything to be exchanged. There has to be something that you want to exchange it with. So it makes sense that the currencies are in pairs. So the reason for this is that in every foreign exchange transaction, you are simultaneously buying one currency and selling the other. So I did mention it. Okay. So the base currency is the basis by which you buy or sell. So for Euro US to pair. You will buy the euro if you believe the euro will appreciate or gain value relative to the quote currency. So let's just make it very simple. This is Great Britain pound, United States dollar. So this very first one here is the base. And this very first one here is a quote, or what we call counter quote. So this is the quote currency. Okay. So whenever you, you place a buy, what you're buying is you're buying GBP. You're buying GBP, looking at it that GBP will appreciate. It will continue to increase in price so that you will profit from buying it. So while you're buying GBP simultaneously, you're selling it. So you're buying it against this. Okay. So you're buying the the base currency on the basis that it will gain compared to the quote currency. And the, the reverse will be the case if you sell. So if you sell this, what you're saying is that you are selling this because you have the data to show that this is going to be weak compared to this. So you sell it if you think the base currency will lose value relative to the code. So that's how we say the base currency is the basis with which we buy or sell. So if you're buying it, you're seeing the base currency as being strong. If you're selling it, you're seeing the base currency as being weak compared to the quote currency. You got it? Awesome. So let's go. So we're going to talk more on this on the next slide. So this picture right here just pretty much tells everything. This is the euro dollar. So euro here being the base and the dollar here being the quotes. Okay. And like I said, counter quote. So if euro USD is going to be a good buy it means that you will send the euro is good is stronger is better compared to the dollar so you buy it. the same applies if you're going to sell so you believe the base currency which is euro is going to lose value relative to the dollar you sell it okay so other basic terminologies so we're going to run it through real quick you buy when you feel the base currency has great potential you sell when you feel the base currency is weak compared to the coat. And sometimes we use words like go long or go short. So when we say go long, we mean buy. When we say go short, we mean sell. In the market, there are two major people, you know, pulling the strings. We call them the bulls and the bears. The bulls are those guys that are pushing the market to the upside. The bears are those guys pushing the market to the downside. So the bulls mostly take long positions while the bears take short positions. So if the market is being pushed to the upside, we call that a bullish market. And the market is being pushed to the downside, we call that a bearish market. Got that? So now you know you've learned something new. Bullish, bearish. It, great, isn't it? So now you can impress your friends. So next we're going to talk about is trends. So what does it mean to, you know, what does trend mean in the market? simply means the direction of the market moves so if the market is moving upwards it is an uptrend if it's moving downwards the downtrend if it's moving sideways it's a sideways trend or in fancy terms consolidation or range so these are the three ways that the market could move it can move to the upside which we call bullish or which we call uptrend it can move to the downside which we call bearish or which we call downtrend 
or it will move sideways, which we call consolidation, range, or a sideways market. Liquidity as number of people trading per time. The more people are trading, the higher liquidity. So if there are lots of people in the market, there will be very high liquidity and spreads will be very low. In subsequent classes, you learn more about spreads. Spreads are very low, very cheap, and the market moves very nicely. The, that's usually you know, times when there's a lot of people trading, good trading hours. When we talk about timing, you understand what this means. So, who are these guys? Who are these guys that makes uh, or see a lot of liquidity in the forex market? That make forex trading super, 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 super profitable. Who are these guys? What is key market players? The major people that control about 80% of the market move are the big banks, the financial institutions, the government, central banks, the hedgers. These are the mean guys with the big money, right? So they come in with the big gun, they come with the big money, and they drive price. So when they come in and they drive price, we simply move or toe the line, you know, that they are pulling us towards. So. We always want to trade in line with them. We don't want to try to you know, be smart. Why? Because we only control 20%. So when I say we, 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 what do I mean? I mean retail traders. So retail traders control just about 20% of price move. That's what we control, just 20%. So we do not really have control. So imagine, compare that, someone controlling 80 and that's when you're controlling 20. There is not much control that you have. So you always, you always will want to follow the 80%. So the 80% will push the market upwards. Then you follow the market to the upside. The 80% push the market down for the market to the downside. All right? So as retail traders, we are like at the till end of the food chain. So we follow the leaders, the government, the central banks, the financial institutions, the hedgers. The speculators are pretty much those guys that work in for these guys okay so these guys have people working for them they have the money and they have the guys that things for them take you know plans to take all the trade etc they are the speculators so this is where we are we follow these guy that follows this guy that follows this guy that follows this guy. get a picture all right so when to trade versus when not to trade in this market timing is everything and there are four major sessions. We have the Sydney session, the Tokyo session, London, and the New York session. So four major sessions. So the Sydney session, you could convert this to your time zone. This was set in Eastern Standard Time. So convert it to your time zone using the Forex time zone converter. So convert it to your time zone. Why, why do you want to do this? Because you want to know when you should be trading. If you don't have an idea as to when the market opens, when it closes, when there is strong liquidity and all and volume, you will just be wasting your time. You come into the market when probably when the market is sleeping. Or you come into the market when, when the, the market is not to be traded. So you'll be trading when you, you should stay up and you, and you stay up when you should be trading. So you want to know the exact time based off your time zone that you should be trading. So you see the market opens at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. But this market is kind of slow because you know it's, it's like the first session the market is still early yet so there's a lot of drowsiness and sluggishness in the market so you may not really see major moves but the pairs that you, that you could look to trade during this session are the new zealand dollar the australian dollar makes sense isn't it sydney so next is the tokyo or the asian session that usually opens at 7 a.m eastern standard time and you look to trade yen pairs so this also market is still still you know, trying to rise from the bed so he's still you know, you know, dragging his feet still very groggy so there really is not much volatility as at this time the next session is a london session now this session is heavily traded the big bangs are awake here the big guys, those major people that brings in the money that moves the market are weak here. So there is a lot of liquidity, there's a lot of volatility, and most pairs are being traded 
during this market so you want to look to trade all those euro pairs the pound pairs you could trade several other pairs anyway just cross them so you could say to say okay this is the london market i'm only going to trade all the euros paired with orders or all the gbps paired with orders so you so you decide you know paired in the trade these are things you will learn as you continue your journey next we have the new york market this is also another heavily traded market opens at 8 a.m and it's got very high liquidity high volatility and volume also heavily traded spread is also very low of course the new york market so you will know that the dollar and the cat will be heavily traded so look to pair all the majors paid with different currencies and profit so the best time to trade actually is the overlap of the london and the new york session so at that time when the opposite london is best to trade new york is best to trade so if, if if you can't really be awake when the london market is open or you can't be awake when the new york market is open you can decide to catch it in between all right but these are the two best times to trade the london market and the new york market okay now worst time to trade is Sydney and the why because it's the market is slow, it's very, very slow. So you might not see much move, especially if you want to be a scalper. That is, you want to take positions for short terms. You take it and you out, take it and you out. So you want to be a scalper, you might not really have fun trading this session. Okay, but so if we, if for, for a scalper, you want to trade market that's that's really moving so that you're out of the market in no time. So another time to avoid trading is when there is a major holiday, avoid trading altogether, like totally avoid trading then. Christmas, you know, New Year's, you know, holidays like that, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Independence Day, all those holidays that you know the banks would be closed, you don't want to trade during this time. Remember we said about the guy that trades for the guy, the trades, so, so those people trade for these big banks are humans like you and I, and they go for vacations, they go for holidays and stuff. So stay off the market when these guys are not there. Otherwise, you just keep spending a lot of money paying spread and not getting any results. So like I said, convert this time to your time zone using the time zone converter. So the, let's talk about time frames. Now that we know that these are the best times that you want to trade, then let's talk about time frames. Now there are different time frames beginning from the one minute, you know, one minute, two minute, three minute, four, on and on like that, all up to the monthly. You will have yearly range ETC. or we'll focus mostly from the 15 minutes time frame. I don't really have a business with a one minute time frame, but on on some um, um, trading style, you could actually look to trade from the five minutes. But these are later lessons. So we have the 15, 30, 1 hour, 4 hours, daily, weekly, monthly, and on and on. So let's focus on these very popular time frames right here. The 15 minutes time frame. Each of these time frames, what it simply signifies is that price opens and closes within that time. So say 15 minutes, price opens and closes within 15 minutes. Remember I said price, not market. So price opens and closes within 15 minutes. So you're looking at a particular um, price, say it, it, this was one, and then it goes all the way to five. So it, the time it, it rose from one to five and closed was 15 minutes. So this took 15 minutes to complete, to move from one to five. So if you're looking at it on the four hours time frame, the time it rose from one to five was one hour so the market price opens and closed in one hour so that's what these time frames are for they will guide you when they tell you it's all you're doing your technical analysis and on and on like that so the time frame we 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 trade on are the 15 minutes to the monthly so the, there are some time frames that we call the lower time frames that's usually those you know times that are very quick within the Within the um, 15 minutes to the one hour, you can say the one minute if you look, if you, if you, if you may. So, maybe 15 minutes to the one hour, since lower time frames, and the four hours and above, since the higher time frame. Because some people call the one hour a higher time frame, but I just pretty much see it as, as a lower time frame, you know, especially when you are trading those heavily ones like the daily time frame, monthly, and the four hours. 
one hour then seem like a really lower time frame so call it whatever you may the bottom line is that you should be able to know the point where you should buy and the point where you should sell but that's all there is to the market making money so here is the, how you spot the time frames so on the on the chart this is a trading view chart these are all of the things you learn when you begin all the time frames are listed out so when you select one it shows you the charts so this is on the 15 minutes time frame so this is what the chart looks like on 15 minutes right here so you just uh, pre pretty much create your bias here and say okay you know what price is good enough let me buy this from this point okay on the one hour on day they all have different charts so when you select your time frame you look to do your analysis and enter your market now does that mean that i'll have to wait 15 minutes to trade well yeah because if you whenever you're trading you always want to make sure that you wait to see price close you don't want to jump jump into price because it could move in and then it could close down like this so you want to wait to see price close so say you want to enter the market for example and you are on the 15 minutes time frame yes you will wait for that candle to close so that you you, you take a better decision all right you learn all of that in subsequent classes and that's how we come to the end of the first lesson yay so what have you learned it says forex is in buying and selling off foreign currencies and currencies are traded in pairs because of course it's got to be exchanged foreign exchange so trade them in pairs exchange rates is a ratio of one currency valued against the other the base currency is the first currency while the quote is the second so when you buy you expect the base currency to gain in value as against the code currency the reverse is true for a sell there are three types of currencies the major the crosses and the exotics the key players in the market are the big banks the government hedge funds speculators these control 80 percent of it while others are the retail traders like on the other side of the fence are the retail traders and that's where you and i come in the major sessions are the Sydney, Tokyo, the Asia, London, and New York session. These are the major sessions. The main, the main session to trade like, is the London and the New York session. So convert this time zone to yours and make a better decision as to when you should be trading. There are different time frames in the market when you're from 15 minutes to monthly. So you select a time frame to trade on. A simple rule of thumb is that you look to enter on the lower time frame say 15 minutes okay you do your analysis on, on a higher time frame look to take your trade on the lower time frame so now you know it so here's an assignment for you you could do this assignment if you so wish or you could ignore it your choice convert the different sessions in your time zone send us an email at winning with forex 2.0 at gmail.com remember this is a marathon it's not a race so that means you need to move at your pace. The bottom line is that you get to the finish line. And what's the finish line? Where there is profit. That's where the finish line is. So if you're new, let us help you get started. Let us walk you through all of the process, tell you or teach you everything you need to learn to profit. Thank you for watching. So I see you again next time. Have a great day. Bye bye.